Welcome to America's Heroes Group. And welcome back to America's Heroes Group, our roundtable with our partner, Women Have a Voice with Deborah Denhart. Today is Saturday, Saturday, November 19th, 2022. November is Military Family Appreciation and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. Our host is Cliff Kelly. I'm Sean Claiborne, a co-host, Army National Guard veteran. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. And our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have our partner back with us again, Deborah Denhart. She is a U.S. Air Force veteran and marketing communications public relations professional. And she has brought us her guest, which is a panelist. Her guest panelist is, is, a, is a Sonny Meckham. And now we want to talk about she's a White House uh, Prof- Presidential Innovation Fellow and a professional powerhouse. That is a White House Presidential Innovation Fellow and a professional powerhouse. And Sonia is a white. Uh, Sonia is a mathematician, a statistician, tech strategist, lifelong part learner, and more. She has held positions in the Silicon Valley with Cisco, Intuit, PayPal, and Sun. As a White House Presidential Innovation Fellow, she is the leading women's inclusion, diversity, equity, and access, and access or IDF working group under the Secretary of the VA's Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity and Access Council. These efforts will impact the current and future policies adopted for women in the VA. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here, Sean. Our pleasure. Thank you, Sean. So, yes, I'm so excited to have Sonny here today. It's such a privilege to have her. She's she's just amazing. And we're going to start off with um, her. You know, she has such amazing background and experience, Sonny. You were just, you know, have so much influence and, and ideas to share. So let's start off with what, what are some barriers you see women facing today? Well, you know, we've come a long way. So, um, but there are still some barriers that I notice every day and other women tell me as a part of um, the, uh, the VA Women's um, Idea Subcouncil. Um, you know, it's really a lack of recognition and respect mm-hmm. or acknowledgement of ideas. Um, you know, for example, a doctor once shared with me that um, she was meeting with a group of other doctors and somebody came into the room um, and instead of addressing her as a doctor, they addressed her as miss, but all of the male doctors were addressed as doctor. So they just leaped to mm-hmm. the conclusion that she's not a doctor because she's a woman. So right. I've heard this from so many uh, Lost audio really for a second. relate to not being acknowledged. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so true. I, I find that as well. I think on our last program, I did share some of my experiences as well. And it's just, it, you, hit it, you hit the nail on the head. That's just so true. And it's just good to hear, you know, that you're not alone. So why do you think it's important to talk about these barriers, Sonia? Well, you know, if we don't talk about them, we can't address them, right? And then everything stays the same. So um, I think it's important for women to openly share and support each other in um, meetings um, or wherever they see these unconscious biases. And the other reason to talk about them is um, when when uh, men are are making these mistakes or other people are making these mistakes, it's probably very unconscious. Um, I think we should always assume good intent and find a respectful way to address it. Um, so, for example, you may not want to call them out in the meeting, uh, but you might want to take them aside outside of the meeting and say something to them. I have found that the majority um, are very unconscious of what they're doing and are very grateful to have it pointed out. Absolutely. That's so true. You kind of touched on this, but I know what are some other things we can do to overcome these obstacles or barriers for women? So education, um, are there other things that we can do? Well, women can continue to share ways things can change, right? Mm -hmm. I think women coming together, I'm so impressed that you have this program because 
Uh, one voice may go unnoticed, but if we come together and we talk about the challenges that we're having, um, we can empower each other. Uh, you know, we came a long way to get the right to vote and work in a safe working environment. Uh, and it was it didn't happen because of one woman. There was somebody mm. leading, but women came together um, and and really fought for that. That's so true. That is so true, right? I mean, we each can make a difference. You know, I, sometimes you think, but who am I, right? I mean, who are we? Who's one person? Um, but I love the saying, you know, like the starfish, when you find a starfish, you know, you, you know, uh, someone on the beach, you know, finds these and someone else comes along and says, well, that's just, what are you doing? You're not, you know, and the person responds, is, response is, I saved that one, right? I mean, I saved that one starfish. So you're so, so right. We can make such a difference, you know. Um, I love your background. So <laughs> you have such a cool background coming from Wyoming. Can you share, like, some of the views of women in Wyoming and how, you know, do you think they're different from other areas of the country? Well, I do. Um, I think women show their strength in a lot of ways, but the culture in Wyoming um, is, um, I, I do find it different. I grew up not even having it cross my mind that I couldn't do anything a man could do. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, but uh, Wyoming is really a leader in women's equity. Um, we were the first state to give women the right to vote. Um, wow. Yeah, I had I had lots of great women role models, and but when I got to grad school, I started noticing a difference. Uh, being in math and statistics mm-hmm. and technology. I was typically the only woman in the room. And if I didn't stand up for myself and, um, you know, raise my hand and insist on being heard, I wouldn't be where I am today. And it, you know, it took courage. Uh, Especially, you know, it was really a culture shock, especially when I got into corporate how differently they treat women. I mean, they always were asked, if I was the only woman in the room, and I typically was, they'd ask me to take notes. You know, if I didn't say something, if I didn't say something to um, the vice president or whoever asked me that, um, he would have continued to do that. But he didn't even realize that that was an unconscious bias. And that changed quickly. That's all. Oh, that's crazy that they expected you to take notes. Oh, my goodness. And you have, you also, I think you mentioned previously, what, a, a previous conversation, was your mother a mayor? Yeah, my mom was a mayor in, in the town that I grew up in. And, you know, speaking of having a voice, um, she ran for mayor because she didn't like the policies and the direction that the town was headed. And before that, she started a newspaper. There was one newspaper in town and only one voice. And she, you know, that's what I mean. You know, it's like courage Mm -hmm. um, to to stand up and have your voice heard. Absolutely. And as a mayor, a leader, you know, what a great example for you growing up to have your mom be a mayor. You know, I mean, what? You know, as far as empowering women, like, you can do it, right? I'm going to be a mayor. You know, I think that's, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Now, I know you have a, you have a lot of background in, in so many different areas, but I, I want to, let's try, I want to touch a little bit about some of the things you're doing now. I know there's some projects you're working on to help with some of these challenges for women um, currently. Can you share what some of those are? Sure, I'd be happy to. First of all, the the home organization that I belong to in the federal government is called Technology Transformation Services, and they're doing a lot around inclusion, diversity, equity, and access, and are really conscious about um, improving the culture. 
But Mm -hmm. where I'm detailed, which is at the VA, and I've been at the VA for the last three years and absolutely love it, I'm working with uh, the assistant secretary there to improve the culture because the the culture um, really is the foundation for how we treat um, the veterans that we serve, right? So we're mm-hmm. very, yeah, we're really focused on improving uh, the culture, the equity, uh, the inclusion of women. Women comprise 60%, a little more than 60% of the employees in the VA. And, um, yeah. And so we started um, this group of women who report into the sub council um, on inclusion, diversity, equity, and access across the VA who, um, you know, report up through the chain of command to the secretary. There's only a couple of boards above them. And um, we are really uh, looking for barriers for, for example, promotion. Um, And it's so inspiring. All of these women from across the VA are really spending extra time to um, identify these barriers and, and do ideation around how we can reduce them. And then we're making uh, proposals to the, the sub-council about what the priorities are um, for improving the culture for women. Uh, it's, and so not only do we have a voice, and we wouldn't have if we hadn't started this group, And the ideas and the recommendations are coming from the women. It's the women's voice, not some outside consultants or whatever. It's the VA women who have come together. And, um, it, you know, it's inspiring to me. They're adding such tremendous value um, as a team. And I'm so thankful to have them around me on a regular basis. That is so wonderful. What a better voice, right, for women to be women making that, you know, you know, looking at those things. I mean, exactly. they have a better voice, you know. They, and they, they have, know. Mm-hmm, yeah. They, there's so much passion around it, you know. It's, um, it's contagious. Mm-hmm. That's great. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Now, what are what are some things that you've faced as a woman that have been obstacles? Well, you know, I'm in a dominantly male field with a background in math and statistics and technology, and I basically faced the same things as many other women have faced uh, in not being heard. Um, but I don't let it stop me. I think, you know, having those role models um, – has helped me have the courage to share my ideas and expertise and gain the respect of the men around me who have then sponsored me and mentored me and helped me. And I feel like it's my responsibility now to be a, a, uh, a you know, a role model for other women. And that's what we need to do. We need to pull each other up behind us, right? And um, and if somebody is hesitant or doesn't have the courage uh, to do what they think is necessary, then you know, pump them up and give them uh, give them the confidence that they can do it. Absolutely, absolutely. We should be there for each other, right? Absolutely, empower each other and. And pick each other up. I love that. Absolutely. Now, how do you personally overcome those barriers when you face them? You know, you gave a few things, but are there any other things to help when that happens? You know, you see those barriers and, and, you know, what do you do? Yeah, exactly. You know, let me uh, tell you about a little tool that I use because confidence is not my strong suit, believe it or or not. That's where the courage has to come in. And I use this 
a tool called Check the Facts. Whenever I have something really important that I have to do, a speech um, at a conference or, or a briefing I have to give to senior leaders, what I will do is I will take a piece of paper and actually write down, Here are, here's how I'm feeling about this and what's making me feel less confident. And then I have a column that's the facts. And I have built... Um, techniques for gathering the facts, like if it's a big presentation, then I always um, have a a senior leader or my sponsor review it and tell me, you know, what are the obstacles? What are there? Is there language I'm using that might trigger people? Um, And so, you know, I can write my fact column. Uh, Senior leader thought the briefing was fantastic, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Uh, After I give a presentation, I always ask for feedback, and I can write down the the good comments uh, and the things that I have worked on because of the feedback I've gotten. And it just helps to write it down and make it explicit, and you, um, more often than not, understand that it's really an unvalidated emotion that's making you feel uh, um, you know, less confident. It's not the facts. Wow. So I can tell you that, yes, I, it's been very helpful for me. But what a great tip. I want to incorporate that. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Now, what are some things, you know, we can do to empower ourselves as women each day? Like, do you have any thoughts of, of how we can do that for ourselves? You bet. This is another little trick that I do. I have a um, a to-do list, um, whether it's implicit in my head and the things I need to do or if I've written it down. But one of the things I try and do every day is something to educate or grow myself. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be big. You know, we don't – if you write something really big like get a promotion on your checklist – then you're not going to do that in a day. But if you write down on your list, find out the minimum requirements for that job, that's something that you can attain in a day or two. And if you just chip away at it day by day, um, whether it's gaining new knowledge about something, uh, to be a better mom or a photographer or whatever it is that you're passionate about, make time for yourself, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes, to educate and grow yourself. It's critical. It really is. We take care of everybody around us, but we Mm -hmm. need to make time to take care of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Now, do you sit, do you believe we can change a system or policy. I mean, I know people think, what, what what difference can I make, right, if I speak out? But what are your thoughts on changing a policy by speaking out as women? Oh, definitely we can do it. I mean, men didn't give us the right to vote. We fought for it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right, women right. Women make this happen by uniting and really having a voice. And we can do the same thing today. In fact, we have better platforms today, and we've come a long way already, but um, whatever those policies are, um, if you're passionate about it, find other women who are passionate about it. There are groups all over, Um, and the same thing at work. If you're fighting for a policy change or something at work, Build that network. Put on your list one thing that you can do to find other women who feel the same way. And, um, you know, the most important thing is that you you have a united voice, and that you're respectful, and that you assume good intent of the people around you. But we can yes, definitely, definitely, there isn't anything we can't do. I firmly believe right. that. I love that. Yes, absolutely. We have about a minute left, uh, Sonny. Um, and I just, I wanted to, you know, you're just amazing. But do you have one final thought that you could share about something we can do to help support women in the workplace for each other? Yeah. Um, 
you know, use these tips and find other tips to build your confidence. Um, find other women who um, are you're aligned with. And remember that we can make a difference. We can make change if we stand up and have a voice. But nothing's going to change if we keep doing what we've been doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sonny. And thank you, Deborah, for bringing a great partner. Deborah Denhart and guest panelist, White House Presidential Fellow Sonny Meckham. For our course, inspirational show, stay tuned to America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back. <laughs> 